Bizarre Birds next on The Amazing Art Show. Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Beam, and today we, I'm so excited about our project, we are doing Bizarre Birds inspired by artist Matt Seesaw. And um, he is a very unusual artist. Um, and I will tell you that his birds that we're gonna be looking at today are some of his tamest work. And um, so you have to be kind of careful when you are you know, Googling him and just, just make sure you put in birds. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what you're gonna need today. Um, you are going to need like sheets of foam and the foam that I had the most of was black but you could use colored if you want to but a lot of the examples that I show you today it's going to be black but it's still the same stuff. Um, you are going to need just some regular like a regular folder, file folder. You actually only need one half of it. You're going to tear it in half and you are going to need some acrylic paints um, just you know whatever kind of colors you want work fine. You're going to need um, a good glue and we've used this one a lot before. Um, it's one of those that grabs real quick and holds it really, really well. And then um, you're also going to need some gesso, which I've talked about before. I've just got mine over on my little plate over here. Um, but remember that's the white stuff and it kind of preps your surface to be painted. And so um, we'll be needing a little bit of that. You'll need scissors. Um, probably a piece of scrap paper would be really um, wise because you're going to be doing a ton of pieces and you want to make sure that you've got everything. So, um, so let's look really quickly at um, some of his artwork. So these are Matt Seesaw's um, birds and you will see that they are very bizarre and um, very abstracted and have kind of these strange and unusual shapes and and shapes that are even drawn on them and so just really weird and strange and they all have like these little common these little names like this one's called common flicker and um, trying to read some of the other ones um, the eastern kingbird and the brown creeper and so they all um, you know are different and but also I want you to look really closely because you might see like stars that are drawn on the wings or this one has like a little cup of tea, or it could be coffee, I'm not quite sure. And um, this one looks like some kind of a little rabbit or upside down rabbit. Um, so very strange, unusual. And then I also want you to notice that every time you see the eye that's on the bird, adjacent to that, you will see a little circle. And that's the bird's other eye. And it is typically not attached to the bird. It's kind of like off you know, to the side. And so um, we are going to be borrowing some of those concepts of Matt C's house. Um, we're going to be having some very unusual shapes, colors, and we're going to look at those eyes again. And, um, and then we're going to also come back to these little names that he's given his birds. All right. So um, first off, let me tell you that um, Matt C's house, when he was around the age of eight, he a landing plane hit and severed his left arm and he was left-handed at the time so he had to kind of reteach himself everything but with his right hand so if you can only imagine you know your whole life you know for eight years of your life when you're really doing a lot of critical learning you're using your left hand and then all of a sudden you can't anymore and you have to relearn everything with your right hand and so um, that plays a big role in a lot of his art. And so, and you'll, especially like the titles of his artwork and, and um, not necessarily in his birds, but I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of background information on him. So, um, so that's Matt Seesaw. And um, so if you see a picture of him, he, he is missing his arm. And I wanted to kind of prepare you for that as well. And, um, but awesome, awesome artist. So let's get started on our project today. And I mentioned earlier to you about you're going to need 
a scrap piece of paper and this is basically just going to be so you can make sure you get kind of all of your body parts. So I'm going to start out with my pieces of foam and obviously I'm going to need a head, a body, wings, legs, all that, but you want to, it gets to be a lot of pieces and so it kind of helps you keep track of things if you kind of make yourself a little map. So on my paper, um, keeping in mind that my shapes are going to be very um, strange and kind of unusual, um, I'm just going to kind of, and my shapes may not even look like this, but that's kind of how I'm just going to draw them out. So uh, I'm going to have a body shape, and I want my body shape to be, you know, pretty close to two fists big. So don't make it super small. You want it kind of big, um, oval-ish kind of shape. And I want something, I want a head shape. And this is going to, we're going to call this um, the first head. So, and I labeled everything because it started getting confusing. So we're going to call this, I'll call this head number one. Okay. And then I want a smaller shape that's going to be also part of the head. This will be head number two. And then we want some kind of an unusual um, eye shape. And so we're going to put I shape and then obviously we're going to need a beak and I like to do the beak in two separate pieces and we need a wing at least one wing you might want to do two depending on um, how you're doing it and let's see how do I want to do my wing I'm just going to do something kind of like that, trying to kind of keep it proportionate to my body. I don't want it to be bigger than my body, and I don't want it to be teeny tiny too small. i um, also going to need um, some kind of a tail, and so I'm going to put wing here and tail here, and let's see, I also need my like true kind of eye shape, and we're going to actually make the eye shape kind of human-like, and we need two of those. So, and on your eye, you've also got your iris, and your pupils, we'll just put those there, and legs, I'm just going to do something kind of like that, and Let's see. Is that everything? I think it is. Oh, no. You can also do, if you want, this is just kind of an if you want to, kind of a crazy kind of headpiece for your birds. So, you know, something kind of fun and that makes them cute to the girl birds. All right. So, I think that's everything. All right. So, now that we've kind of got our map, um, we're just going to cut shapes and we're going to start putting them in our little areas. They don't necessarily have to be this exact shape. I'm just got it there just to kind of help me make sure I've got all my pieces. So I'm going to do my body. And one thing I will tell you when you're doing this, um, a couple of my kids had a really hard time just, you know, cutting just like normal um, and getting the shape that they wanted. And even though we're making these very abstract and you're not going for an exact circle or exact oval, um, they wanted, they had it in their head, you know, how they wanted it to look. So you can actually draw on the foam with your pencil if you want to. And then cut it out. So this is going to be my head number two shape. And I want to double check and make sure that that's smaller, and it is. And then I'm going to do my weird kind of eye shape. And I'm going to do that there. And before you do like the beak, legs, tail even, and your eye, iris, and pupil, kind of wait and do those towards the end. So I would go ahead and do my wing next. Kind of knock that out first. Okay, got my wing. And because the reason why I told you to wait is because sometimes 
the scraps that you end up with look really cool as pieces that you can actually use. So for example, like I could go ahead and trim this and just give it a little cut and I've got my beak. So I didn't really have to worry about, you know, making that shape all by itself. It kind of makes itself. And a lot of times, especially like right here on the end, you end up with um, enough of the shape that you can do a leg. You get kind of a leg shape right in here. And so that would be a really good leg. And then you just have to make one more. And they don't have to match. So kind of keep that in mind. And you can make your bird's legs, um, you know, like they're bending. Or you can make them a little more straight. All right, so I'm going to do the other one like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and do, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to cut this off right here. And I'm going to do my fancy little head piece for my bird. I'm just going to give it a couple little cuts inside there. So it doesn't look exactly like that one that I drew, but that's okay. And let's see here. I'm going to come in this direction and trim that off. And then I'm going to use this um, as my tail feathers. And so that can go there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my, this stuff is very staticky and so it will stick to your fingers. You will have foam stuck to you for a week. I'm going to go ahead and do my like proper kind of eye shape, like human-ish kind of eye shape. Goes there. I think I can fit another one in here. It's going to be a little bit smaller, but we're making these very abstract, so that is all right. Okay. And then I'm going to do the iris. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how to add some other color to these here in a second. And then for your pupils, seriously, like, don't even give it a second thought. It doesn't even have to be round. So I'm just going to cut a little snippet there and a little snippet there. And so now I know that I've got all my pieces. All right. So I've got all my pieces. Kind of give everything a once over, make sure I'm happy with it. Um, save your scraps because you may want to use those for something else a little bit later. I'll, hopefully I'll remember to come back and mention that. Um, all right. So the next step is you're going to get your gesso and you're going to um, paint it on your shapes. And the way I want you to do it is I want you to put it where it leaves a little bit of the color of the shape showing. And I'm just using my finger. You're going to see me using my fingers a lot for this one. And you're just going to spread it out. And then when it dries, it's going to dry um, kind of white. Not like bright, bright, bright white, but um, you know, you'll be able to see it. And it's really not that big of a deal to have it be like all that beautiful looking because you're really just going to paint over it. This is just kind of prepping it to get it ready for you to start to add color. So I've already actually got some of my pieces. Oh, wait, before I do that, your folder, because we need the gesso for that too. Um, your folder, you're going to take a regular size folder and you just need half of it. And you can use the bigger half or the smaller half, it really doesn't matter, but you're just gonna tear it in half. And then when you get done, you'll end up with something, you know, like this. And then I usually like to use the bigger part, so I'm gonna use that. You're gonna get your gesso, and you're gonna do a little line of gesso that just goes around. It doesn't have to be in the middle, just a little outline, basically. and. It's kind of like, it, you don't have to be really particular with this. Like, this is one of those projects, like, messy is good. And so, embrace the messy. Um, all right, so, 
Um, I'm going to move that to the side and let that dry because that does take a tad bit of time to dry. Your foam pieces, they actually dry fairly quick with the gesso on them. Um, and I've already got some here that I already gessoed so they would be ready to go. So I've got my body, I've got my legs, I've got my crazy little head shape, head one, head two, my wing, pupils, or somewhere, I lost a pupil, but that's okay. Um, Iris's eye shape, my tail shape, crazy little eye shape, and then my beak. So I'm good to go, I've got all my pieces. And basically, the next thing that I want you to do is you're gonna use your fingers again, and you're gonna be coming in and you're just going to paint um, your shapes. And I want you to kind of think about what, what kind of colors you might wanna use for starters. And, you know, do you want to do a bird that has all warm colors? Do you want to, you know, have a bird that has warm and cool? Kind of get that in your head, kind of your plan at first. And keep in mind, you know, you've also got beaks and legs in there. And um, so kind of be thinking about, like, what color am I going to make those? Am I going to keep them like a typical yellowy kind of color? Or am I going to do something totally crazy? Because this is... This is definitely the project to do it. All right, so I'm going to just go in and I'm going to, this is what the gesso look like when it dries. You can kind of see through it a little bit. And I had all my kids, we just used our fingers to paint. It was like the time I said, this is the one time I'm gonna let you use your fingers to paint. And they really liked it. Um, and. I want you to also think about, you know, like incorporating some kind of a pattern. And also, you can leave some of your gesso showing, because it just kind of adds an extra color in there that, you know, so now I've not only do I've got, I've got black, I've got white, I've got this melon kind of color. And so you're just going to go through and start adding colors to your pieces. And I didn't even wash my finger. I just, I'm just letting it mix if it mixes, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. And... I'm going to do some blue on this one. And I even, sometimes I even come in and I'll just do, I'll just kind of even mix the colors together, mix them up a little bit. I just got my finger in the gesso. All right, let's see. I really like this color. So you're going to add color to all your pieces. And then you're going to need to let them dry a little bit. And you want them to dry so that you can either come back and add some extra colors on them, or that's when you can come back and do your patterns. So we're going to kind of, I'm going to move on to my next part so I can show you that. So I'm going to scoop these over. Let these dry a little bit. All right, so now I've got, this is my tail. And you can see where I've kind of come back in and I've added extra colors. These are my legs. This is my crazy little head, sh um, fancy feathers on his head. That's probably head two, head one. Here are my eyes and my um, wing and my beak. And then um, what I wanted to show you is you can come back in and you can actually use, you know, different objects that you can kind of stamp with. So you could come back in, you know, and put some other shapes on there. You could come back in and do even something more inside there if you wanted to. Um, you can use, I think I'll do this color. You can do the end to make perfect little dots. So have fun with it. This is like one of those things you can really have fun with it and do lots of cool things. And let me wipe my fingers off. Okay, so now before you get rid of paint, I want you to come in and you're going to get your brushes and I want you to add color to your folder. You're going to leave the gesso line showing. You want that to be showing. So I'm going to come in and just do some turquoise here. My 
brush was a little wet. And remember how we talked about this is not particular. Don't have to like really give this a lot of thought. And this would be like a really fun project to do just with a group of friends because the, the, you know, the supplies aren't that expensive. And it's probably one that everybody can be very su successful at because it's not one that's, you don't have to be like a really big artist to do this particular piece that we're working on. And I think I'm actually just going to fill this the rest of the way in. I could do another color if I wanted to, but I'm just doing. I do want to uh, make sure that I get that all filled in. And then same thing about, you know, what we talked about before about using some other tools to kind of come in and add some extra details. So come in and you can do dots, stripes, zigzags, whatever you want to do in your background. All right, so now we're going to kind of fast forward ahead and I want you to glue all of your pieces together. That's where you're going to come in um, with this tacky glue and it's just, you just put a little dot of glue. Um, think about like, especially when you're doing the fancy little feathers for the head, you want to glue to the back so that you glue the two pieces you know, down this piece will go behind this one. Um, and so you're just layering your pieces and getting them together. So I've got one that I've already got together. And kind of move these again. All right, so I've got my bird. And um, one thing I wanted to mention to you, and I tell you, I don't know where they went. Oh, there they are. Um, your irises, you can like have a lot of fun with your irises. I came in and did um, a couple different colors. I used my brush, I used the end of my brush just to kind of take the paint and kind of pull it out from the center. And so I'm really anxious to see what those eyes look like. I wish my, I was going to have time to put my whole bird together, but I'm not. So, um, but I did want to show you that because it really looks awesome. All right, so check out uh, my bird that I have that's together. Um, on this one, just to kind of point out a couple things, um, I took my brush and after I painted on, I actually scraped off some of the paint. So that's where you see these lines in here. And I used the end of my brush to do the dots. And um, I came back in, remember when I said to remind me to come back and tell you, you can come in and just add extra little pieces of just plain foam. They don't have to be painted. Add those onto your pieces as well. And um, then you're ready to grab your folder, and I'll just use this one. And then you're going to be placing your bird. Now you want to, let me turn it your way. You're going to place your bird somewhere in the general vicinity of the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly though. And you're going to be gluing that down. But remember how um, Matt Seesaw would name his birds. That's what we're going to use this little area for, is where you're going to put the name of your bird, all right? And one thing that I did want to mention, because this threw my kids a little bit, so let me point it out to you. This eye, remember how we talked about how on Matt Seesaw's, his eye was like almost off of the bird? If you want to, you can wait and glue this on without this piece and then glue it out off to the side if you want to be like genuine Matt Seesaw-ish. Um, or if you want, you can just kind of barely have it kind of hanging on like I have on this one. So you're going to go ahead and glue that on, and then you're going to come up with the name of your bird. Now this was really fun in class. We decided that we weren't going to give our birds like actual real names, and we gave all of our birds had what some of our nicknames were plus the word bird. So I'm going to show you a couple examples really fast. Um, this was one that I did, and I came back. Um, you can see I've added some dots, and this is a Weezer bird because when I was little, I had asthma really bad, and I would wheeze, and so seriously, I've been called Weezer most of my life. So I thought that was a really good nickname, and then um, I've got another one here. My husband, I did this one for my husband. Um, 
and he, he has the nickname Beaker, and so I called it the Beaker Bird, and so the kids had a great time coming up with what nickname they were going to use and how it would work together with their bird. So let's go very quickly and do our quote for today. People are sometimes very frightening to me. I paint what I think the subject might be thinking about me. Faces, a hand, and mouths are very expressive. But it all comes together in the eyes. Everyone I paint stares down as I create them, challenging me to fail. Matt Seesaw. Last little thing, we were talking about, um, you know, doing your, you know, coming up with your name. And um, the other thing I also wanted you to do was get some kind of a black marker or black paint. And, um, you know, I want you to go in and around, just kind of a messy kind of a line that kind of goes around. And then you're going to come back in and name your bird. So I have not really decided, I think I'm just going to do my messy kind of line right in here. And you can be, you can do it on top of the gesso, that's okay. Or if you want to kind of be off of it, that's all right as well. And I am going to name this bird Sassy Bird. Because I think it looks kind of sassy. And then the last thing I'll need to do is I can just glue my little Sassy Bird right on there. I might want to come in and do some kind of a decorative element on here. So that is our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us on The Amazing Art Show. Now go out and make some amazing art.